Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use waste yarn using the panel method on your circular knitting machine. Now I've got my Addi Express king size here but you can use this method with absolutely any knitting machine, any size, any brand. It will all work exactly the same so whether you've got an Addi or a Centro or another brand don't stress, you will still be able to follow these instructions. So if you're not familiar with waste yarn and the reasons why we use waste yarn, I do have a video on my channel. So I recommend going and watching that first before we get into this video. And that will just kind of explain the reason we use waste yarn, the benefits of using waste yarn, so on and so forth. So go and check that out first before we continue in this video. I also wanted to mention that if you're not familiar with the panel mode and using your knitting machine in the panel mode, I have another video on my channel that I do also recommend going and checking out before we watch this video because in this video I'm literally just going to be talking about waste yarn in the panel mode. I'm not going to be giving you instructions on how to knit a panel and all that kind of stuff because I've already done that and there is already a very in-depth video on my channel. So if you're not familiar with waste yarn and you're not familiar with knitting a panel on your circular knitting machine, please go and check out those videos first. If you are familiar with both of those things, we are ready to get started. So just keep on watching. Okay, so to get started, you are going to need two contrasting colors of yarn. So I've got this hot pink color here, and then I've got this light pink color. And as you can see, they are very, very different and very contrasting, which is what we want. We don't want two colors that are similar or two colors that are the same because it will just make our lives a lot harder. So grab two contrasting colors of yarn. Now for your waist yarn, I don't recommend using your best quality yarn. We may have to cut it. It may get tangled. You may have to throw it in the bin. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing a color for your waist yarn. My waist yarn today is going to be this light pink color and my main project color is going to be this hot pink color. So once you've got your contrasting yarn colors, we are going to cast on. But first of all, we just want to make sure our machine is in the panel method. So here I've got mine set to plain knitting, which is what it says on the Addy. Um, but on any other machine, it will usually have a T or a P, T for tube and P for panel. So you want to make sure it's on the panel method. In saying that though, you don't actually need to use a panel setting to knit a panel. So it doesn't really matter if you've forgotten to put it on the panel mode or if your machine for some reason doesn't have a panel mode. I don't know if there are machines out there without the panel function. Don't stress, you can still need a panel. You don't need the panel mode. It's basically only relevant if you're using the entire machine to make a panel because it will stop you at the end of the row so you know when to go back. But if you're only using half the machine and you're not using the full machine, it really doesn't matter if you use the panel mode or not. Anyway, like I said, this is not a panel knitting tutorial. If you want to know more, go and check out the panel knitting video on my channel. Okay, so I am just going to find peg one, which is this black peg here. And I'm going to cast on as normal as you normally would if you were knitting a normal panel. Okay, so we are going to cast on a panel. I'm not going to use my entire machine. I'm not making anything in particular today. This is simply just for demonstration purposes. So I'm not going to use my entire machine, but you would obviously just cast on as many stitches as you needed for your project or for whatever you're making. So I'm just going to use roughly about half the stitches of my machine today. This is the Addi Express King size. So it has 46 pegs. So I'm going to use, let's say around 33. Uh, 23. I'm not very good at maths, as you can tell. I think I've already gone past halfway, but anyway, you get the idea. We're roughly halfway there. Again, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna just continue knitting a panel. And obviously we're using the waist colored yarn first. So this is going to be the yarn that we will be removing from our project. So it doesn't matter what color it is. It's not gonna be part of your project in the end. So we're just gonna continue cranking out a panel until we've completed about 10 to 11, roughly around there, 
rows because you want to have multiple waste yarn rows because if they do start to unravel when we take it off our machine, it won't matter. I'm going to go ahead and crank out 10 to 11 rows of waste yarn. Okay, so once you have cranked out your waste yarn rows, I think I did more than 10, but again, doesn't matter. You just want to make sure you've got at least 10 to be safe. You are going to take your main color. So this is the color that your project is going to be. And we're now going to start working with this color. So you can cut your waste yarn or you can leave it attached to the skein if you want to, totally up to you and just place that end in the middle of our machine. And taking your main color, we're just gonna leave an end in the middle there and pop that into the yarn guide. Now we can just start cranking as normal and it will start using our main color. So at this point, you will just crank out however many rows you like. So again, it will just depend on what you're making. So you can crank out as many rows as you like. And then once you're done, come back here and I'll show you what is next. All right, so once you have cranked out as many rows as you need to for whatever project you're making, you can just cut your yarn or again, you can leave it attached to the skein if you want to, totally up to you. And doing exactly what we did before, we're just gonna pop that end into the middle of our machine. Then what we're gonna do is take back our waste yarn. This can be the same color we just used. It can be a different color if you're just using some scrap yarn. Again, we're doing the exact same. So just popping an end into the middle there and popping that into our yarn guide. And we're now, going to continue cranking. Again, we want to complete a minimum of 10 rows. So go ahead and do that and then come back here. Okay, here I am at the end of my second lot of waste yarn. So now what we're going to do is remove our work from the machine. So I'm going to cut my yarn. You don't have to. Again, you can leave it attached to the skin if you want to for now. Totally up to you. But I have cut mine and I'm removing that. So what we want to do is hold up this end and we're just going to remove it from our machine as we would any other time. So just by cranking, crank around once to the end of the panel and then back again and it should just pop off of our machine. So cranking and then back again. And as you can see, it's just popping right off, which is what we want. Okay, so once you have removed your work from the machine, you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. So we've got waste yarn, our main project color, and then waste yarn. You can stretch it out to tidy it up a little bit if you like. So as you can see, we've just got a single layered panel. And if you flip it over, this is the great thing about waste yarn, is you can easily see the stitches here that now need to be secured. Now what you want to do is decide how you want to fasten it off. My favorite is going in with a crochet hook and just fastening off these stitches either with slip stitches or with a single crochet or something like that. Otherwise you can go in with a darning needle and your main colored yarn and just fasten off all these stitches. I'm going to show you both examples. So I'm going to go in first with a darning needle and fasten off these stitches to show you what that looks like. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to go in with a crochet hook and fasten these stitches off using a slip stitch. So first up, we're going to start with the darning needle option. So taking your needle, something with a large eye that can fit the yarn through easily. We're just going to thread that onto that tail that we left at the beginning and end of our row. What you want to do is go in under those main color stitches that we can see here and fasten them off. So finding the first one there, going in under that stitch. And you can use whatever stitch you like. I kind of just like to use the whip stitch. So just going in the same way into every stitch. Just like this. And 
and we're just going to repeat this all the way to the end of the row. So this method's great if you don't know how to crochet, if you don't own a crochet hook and you've only got access to a darning needle, it's still a great way to fasten off. It's also great if you wanna have a cinched end and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So here I am at the end of the row and I'm just going in under that last stitch to fasten that one off. I'm not gonna tie this end off yet because I'm gonna give you the example of the cinched end, but I can remove my needle for now. And now what we wanna do is remove our waist yarn. So as you can see, this is our cast on edge. So this is our first lot of waist yarn that we completed. So you will be able to see that there's a line of yarn going in under that first row of stitches. So all we need to do is remove that. So just pull it through to unsecure those stitches. Is unsecure even a word? Not sure, hopefully you guys know what I mean. So basically once you pull this out, these stitches will no longer be secured. And once that's all unsecured, you can now just pull the end of this yarn and your waist yarn will come away from your main color. And because we have fastened off those stitches in our main color, we don't have to worry about our main color coming undone because once we get to that section, the waist yarn will come away and our main color will still be there remaining. Now you'll see here why I said don't use your good yarn as your waist yarn because it can become a little bit of a tangled mess sometimes. So that's why I say don't use your best yarn because you might have to cut it or throw it in the bin. So um, yeah, that's why I say not to use your best yarn. Okay, so once you have removed your waist yarn, you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. So as you can see, you've got your tail here, which is the yarn we use to secure our stitches. So what I meant before when I said that this method gives you a nice cinched end is if you pull this tight now, you can easily and neatly cinch the end of your panel together. So this method is usually used when making beanies and things like that if you want it to be cinched at the top but I also love a cinched end on a scarf and then an added pom-pom or tassel I think that looks really cute so this is a great way to do that if you're making scarves so that is how you fasten off with a darning needle now I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to show you how to fasten off with a crochet hook which in my opinion is the better method but I'll let you guys be the judge. Okay, so if you take your panel, you'll notice that if you kind of fold it over a little bit like this, it kind of makes those stitches that are in your main color protrude a little bit. So it makes it really nice and easy to get your crochet hook in under there. So first up, what you wanna do is start off with a slip knot and pop that onto your hook and then I'm gonna find that very first stitch, which is this one here. And all I'm gonna do is go in and secure that stitch with a slip stitch. The first one can be a little bit tricky, but once you've done the first one, it gets a lot easier. So securing that with a slip stitch, then we're gonna find that very next stitch. So again, if you fold it over like this, you'll see the stitches stick out nicely. So you can easily see which one's next. So I'm going into this stitch here. And again, just securing it with a slip stitch. And we're just gonna repeat that in every stitch all the way across, finding all those stitches that are in our main project color and securing them off with a slip stitch. So I mentioned before that I think this is the better method for fastening off. And the reason for that is it gives you a nice solid edge. I will show you the comparison once I've 
finished with this one and we'll have a look at both sides and I can show you the difference. But fastening off with a crochet hook definitely gives you a much nicer, neater, straight edge. So this is how I like to fasten off all my panels. But again, it's totally up to you and it may just depend on what you are making. These last couple of stitches can sometimes be a little bit hidden, so make sure you are fastening them all off. And if in doubt, fasten it off. If you think, oh, I don't know if that's actually a stitch or not, just fasten it off. It's not gonna hurt. You'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay. So that was my last stitch. So they are all nicely fastened off now. You can already see that this has given such a nice finish, but anyway, I'll show you properly in a moment. I'm now just pulling that yarn through and we can now fasten it off. So if yours was attached to a skein, you could cut it now, but I'm just leaving it as is. We are going to just remove our waist yarn now. So again, just like we did before, we are going to be just pulling that end to unravel and this time we don't have to worry about pulling that end out to unsecure our stitches because this was our cast off edge so the stitches are already unsecured so you should be able to just pull it away nice and easy just like I'm doing here very satisfying and now you will see that you are left with the most beautiful neat edge. Sorry, this yarn is not super easy to see on the camera. I probably should have chosen a better color if I'm honest. Red and hot pink never film well, so I should have known better. But anyway, I hope you guys can get the idea. You can see here like how nice that edge is. So this is the crocheted edge and then comparing that to the edge we fastened off with a darning needle. You can see that there's a huge difference. Like this is not neat at all. <laughs> um, the only time I would recommend fastening off like this is if you are going to be doing a cinched end because in that case, it does give you a nice, neat finish. But if you are wanting a straight edge, say you're making a scarf or something and you just want a straight edge, I wouldn't recommend fastening off with a darning needle. It just does not give that nice, neat, professional looking finish like the crocheted fastening off does. So if you don't know how to crochet, I would definitely recommend just going and learning the slip stitch. It is so, so easy. I do have a video on my channel if you wanna go and learn. It's the easiest stitch you could possibly learn. It's probably easier than even using the knitting machine, if I'm honest, um, but it will definitely do your projects the world of good if you do know how to do a slip stitch. So there we have it, guys. That is how you use waste yarn on the panel method. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up so I know to make more content like this. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I will try my very best to assist. And if you are looking for more knitting machine tutorials, please head over to my channel. I have a whole playlist on there of how to use the knitting machine. So be sure to check that out. There's also some really cool project ideas on there. So if you're looking for some inspiration or to learn something new, make sure you go and check out my channel and if you haven't already I have a Facebook group that is called Talk Yarny to Me and we talk all things yarn, crochet, knitting, knitting machine, you name it we talk about it on there so I would love to see you in my Facebook group the link is in the description of this video and of course, as always, I would absolutely love if you could subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. But until next time, guys, stay safe, be kind, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.